In this video, I will demonstrate how you can install Pi VPN onto Raspberry Pi. Uh, the installation is pretty simple. You, know, you just need to execute this command. If you go to their official website, uh, you can also find this command. So I will just copy it and paste it into Raspberry Pi terminal. Then you just need to follow the steps here. I will use Wi-Fi as my interface, but Ethernet would be preferred because the speed is faster. For static IP reservation, I talked about this in another video, so you may want to watch that video first. But here I will say yes. Since Pi is the only user, I will use it. And I will choose OpenVPN. Use a space to select. The default setting is good, so I will say no. We don't need to customize the settings. For the port, just use the default OpenVPN port, 1194. Just remember it. We will use it later uh, in router settings. For DNS provider, if you have a local one, uh, you can use it, but I will just use the default one. For public IP or DNS name, I will just use uh, the domain name I registered earlier. Uh, that domain name uh, points to my public IP. After installation completes, we will need to reboot the system. You will be able to use pyvpn-8 to add a user, and a opvpn file will be generated and stored in the Raspberry Pi. Then you can use the opvpn file to connect to the VPN running on your Raspberry Pi. To use OpenVPN, you will need to download an app on Mac Windows, iOS, and Android, you can download the app and use it. Uh, they have graphical interface and it's very intuitive. However, on Linux, um, you will need to uh, use the command line OpenVPN3. Here are the commands for installation, but there is one uh, environment variable that you need to change. It's the distro. You can go to the uh, official website to see more details. So for the distro environment variable, um, it depends on which operating system and which version you're using. If you look at the table, you can find the release name, which is the distro. To connect or disconnect, uh, you can just use the two commands here. The file name of the OVPN file should be passed in as an argument. The commands are long, so I'm too lazy to use it. Uh, I created two shortcuts for connection and disconnection. You can uh, put the commands into a file and change mode them to be executable. Then uh, move the files to user local bin or uh, somewhere in the past. Then uh, you can simply use a command at the bottom from anywhere uh, in your system. If the OVPN file is always in the same location, you can even uh, include the location in the shortcut file. Raspberry Pi is rebooted and we can start using PyVPN. PyVPN help gives us all the options we can use and we can start adding a new user. PyVPN-8 to add a user. Enter the name of the user. 
you can even specify the expired date and the password. I will just use user. The user is added and a file should be generated um, in the OVPNs directory. Here is a file and now we just need to transfer this file to other devices for them to connect to PyVPN. I'm going to use SCP to transfer this file. user.opvpn is on my desktop. So now I open OpenVPN client. Click plus, file, and we can drag the file into the app. Enter the password, user. Then we can connect. It has the default name, and we can also change the profile name. I will just call it Home VPN. Before connecting to the PyVPN, I will disconnect my home network, and I will connect to my phone's hotspot. So now I'm not seeing the same network uh, with my Raspberry Pi. Uh, the Raspberry Pi is now non-responding and if we ping the raspberry pi i get no response request timeout let's now connect to vpn it won't work yet because we haven't configured the browser setting yet let me connect back to my home network and go to router setting. In port mapping configuration, you need to add a new forward rule. I will call it PyVPN. For internal host, I will use the Raspberry Pi's local IP. And the protocol should be UDP because when we set up the PyVPN, we chose UDP. But you can also just choose TCP or UDP for both of them to work. For internal port number, we use 1194 because that's the port number we used in the uh, setup. External port, we will also use 1194 and apply. Now let's try to connect. Again, connect to my iPhone's hotspot, so we're on different network. Then verify again that we cannot uh, ping the Raspberry Pi. Now let's connect to VPN. We're connected and let's try again to ping Raspberry Pi. We're getting response. And if we try SSH, We can also SSH into Raspberry Pi from external network. Next, let's try to connect to the Pi VPN from my iPhone. I will airdrop this OVPN file to my iPhone. Enter the password, which is user. Well, first, we need to turn off the Wi-Fi connection. But somehow, um, it's still showing Wi-Fi, but, but I verify that uh, the public IP of my iPhone is different from uh, my home. So let me keep testing. We're connected to VPN from my iPhone. And let's try to go to the Portainer uh, portal. 
Let's say on port 9000. Yeah, we can go to this website. Next, uh, let me try to use terminals to SSH into my computers. So it works with Windows. It also works with uh, my Raspberry Pi. This is a safer method to connect to your home network from an external network. Now you can close the SSH port uh, from router setting because that's not safe.